everyone. Welcome back to the How to Podcast series. I have a lightning bolt in a bottle here on the podcast today. I'm excited. Adina's on with me. We're talking about her podcast journey, her, her recent journey to PodFast. Woo-hoo! And she's got a couple questions to ask us, which is great. Uh, Adina, welcome to the How to Podcast series. Glad to have you here as my guest co-host. Yes. Yay. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so excited. Right? This is awesome. So good. I love meeting great podcasters out there doing this in the world, being a guest. I see you guesting all over the place as well, which is awesome. So tell me a little bit about your podcast. Let's introduce it to everyone. What's your show about? My show is Black Butterfly, Black Pearls. I retired as a psychology professor after 20 years over the summer. And I was talking to my friend of over 45 years. We've been friends since I was six and she was five. And after I retired, I said, hey, I'm going to do a podcast. And she goes, I want to do it with you. So I went, okay, great. So what we do is we talk a lot about pop culture and things that are going on in the world. But we add, we bring in a little bit of psychology twist. So I always bring in research. So I have research. We'll talk about that a little bit today. But at the end of my podcast, I always add in some research and we'll talk about it and we'll discuss it. She's a total academic, but she's not really into the research like I am. And so it it's a good contrast because oftentimes she's like, I don't believe that. No, that's not working. And I'm like, it does work. It's research. And, it, you know, I've done it for so long. So it, I just I'm a real proponent of research. So that's Black Butterfly, Black Pearls. And that's anywhere you get your podcast. In fact, I love to walk in my house and say, Alexa, play Black Butterfly, Black Pearls podcast. <laughs> And there you are, right? Isn't that great? And there I am. I did that at a Super Bowl party this weekend. And everybody was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I love I love when you find your podcast somewhere and you're like, I, there I am. I'm right up against this other podcast, this music, this track or whatever. There I am. Just my little podcast, right? It's great. Right. feels so good. Just a little engine that could. Right? It's good stuff. How long has a podcast been going for? Just a while, right? No, no, no. I just started this summer yeah, just with summer. this okay. particular yeah, with this particular podcast. Prior to that, my husband and I have a YouTube channel, and that is Nick and Adina. It's marriage coaches with Nick and Adina, because we're both marriage coaches. We've been marriage coaches since 2003. And he got really busy with some life goals, so he really couldn't do the uh, marriage coaching. Um, on YouTube anymore. So that's when I said, well, I still want, I've still got this podcast bug and I want to keep going. So, and that's been for about four years. We've been doing that one. Good. So you took a trip recently and went to a big festival for podcasters. Can you tell me about this? I'm I'm so jealous, by the way, because I'm up here in Canada and I haven't been able to get down there yet. But talk us through your first big podcasting event. I'd love to share with everybody who hasn't been Teach us, oh great wise one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. We went to Podfest, and it's this was the ten year anniversary of Podfest. I had never heard of it, and I went out there, and it was so amazing because I okay. First, we have a Facebook group, and honestly, I heard about Podfest in December, and when I heard about it here in my town in Florida. I went, I'll do it. You know, I want to learn like anybody else. So I just signed up because it was in January, but it was only like two hours from me. It's in Orlando. So we did quite a few Zoom meetings prior, you know, before going there. And then with the, the this is one thing that they've done. I'm, I'm going to get to that major part, but they have built a major community. So they give you the Facebook group before, you have Zoom meetings that you're doing before. And then when other people get there, I was so jealous. I had so much FOMO. I pulled my kids out of school because I was like, I got to get the pot fast. Because yeah. everybody, people were getting there saying, I'm home. It was in a hotel, but it's just such a beautiful community that individuals felt like they were home. In fact, one person who has worked with PodFest for the full 10 years his dying wish, he's in hospice right now. His name is Lee Stevenson. Yeah. His dying wish was to come to Walmart Podfest. 
And so his hospice nurse, his family, everybody got him to podcast. He's still around us though. He's still, he's still doing podcasting. He is, but you could tell he is, you know, the doctors have done everything they can, yeah. but that was his dying wish. And I'm like, wow, if you can build something so amazing that their dying wish is to experience it one more time, you won. That's amazing. And that, like, and what's nice thing too is it's, from what I hear from people that have been at PodFest, it's not about competition by any means. It's all about community. It's all about people helping each other, building each other up. Where in other content mediums like social media, Instagram, YouTube, it's very competitive to get people mm -hmm. to come to your thing or like your post or watch your video. This feels a little different um, than some of the other content communities out there. What makes podcasting so special to you? What makes it so special to me is the opportunity to storytell. I, for some reason, I'm not into music. Uh, I guess when I was younger, I would listen to a lot of music, but I just want to hear other people's experience. And it's so crazy because me being out of the classroom now, it's that one-on-one -on -one connection that I feel like that person is talking to me and it's something I want to hear about. And so it just makes me feel so connected. There's one podcast I listen to. Well, it's a YouTube channel. And I basically told her, I am so glad you're covering this pop culture because I can't really cover it on my podcast, but I'm interested and I want to hear all about it. And I want you to add your commentary to it. So it's just a real fun community for me. It's like it's like second nature for me. I'm, I'm really happy I'm in this space now. So you got to go to some classes and stuff at PodFest? Did you get to learn anything in, in a classroom setting? I did. Oh, okay. Let me back up and tell you one thing, and then I'll tell you about the classes. Like you were saying, there was no competition. At PodFest, they have like, it was in a hotel, so they have like different areas set up where you can just pop on and podcast with four or five other podcasters. And so... Right. It was like, it. everything was like a master class. I promise you, there was one podcast and they're in 120 countries. And they were like, come over, sign up to get on our podcast and we'll give you a shout out. We'll tell everybody who you are. So it was just a real, and just watching them work. They've done it for a really long time. It just felt like a master class. It's like in every corner, there was a master class going on. And so when I did the podcast with other people, I had never met them before. I sat down and they were like, you're on. So I was <laughs> like, okay, you know me. I'm just like, uh, okay. So then I went, this is Adina from Black Butterfly, Black Pearls podcast. Introduce yourself. So everybody around the table introduced themselves. And then I'm looking and he's like, it's your show. So I was like, okay. So I just started asking questions and they gave me the clip and it's on my podcast. You can always hear that one too. So it was just an amazing experience. And no one was shy. You just walked up and said, hey, what's your podcast? And there was one young lady. She said, I've come to PodFest. For eight years, she was like, I started my podcast Monday. I was like, no. <laughs> but that was the thing. One person was set up and they were doing interviews. And he was like, hey, what is your advice to podcasters? And he put me on mic and camera. He mic'd me up and put me on camera. And I said, just do it. It's going to be wonky. It's going to be strange. It's going to be difficult at first. But if you don't do it, you'll never get the kinks out. You have to get in there and just do it. Whatever equipment you have, and that's the beauty of it. And you can just start out. Even my podcast, my close friend and I, we have, and she tells me all the time, she can hear us getting better, mm -hmm. you know, as we go along because it's new. This is a new medium for both of us. So, and it's only been five months now that we've been doing the podcast, like five, six months since August. And now it's February, but we have 50 episodes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Lost my voice. We have 50 episodes out. And so it's like, just keep doing it. Great. It's good stuff. So what you, the classes, tell me what some of the things you learned about. What did you, what did you go for? Some of the classes. Now, one of the class I did was, uh, it was talking about improv. So it was an improv class oh, nice. where they teach, yeah, just just to, you know, they had some comedians up there and they were teaching you improv to just kind of go off the cuff and do some things. Another class I took was AI. 
they were talking about how to use AI in podcasting now. One other class I took was building a community, you know, how to build a community. Podmatch was there also. And so they were just talking about, it's like you have meetups in different locations. So if you're not taking a class right then, you're not filming right then, you can go and do a meetup. And so in some of the meetups, it was, you know, how to build that community for yourself. And so that was one of the classes and in, in they had a, a meetup in conjunction with that. So those were some of the things I did. Um, they also talked about updating your equipment and different things like that, how to make sure you have the proper equipment for your podcast. And of course they had different vendors that could help you out as well. So, and they had parties. We had a nineties party. Come so on. that was, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was some of the classes I took and, you know, different things as far as, you know, just things you just did not know about podcasting. It's like, it, there was one where it was talking about, and this is a tip that I learned out of the class where, as when you're podcasting, like if you're on Spotify or Apple or wherever the podcasts are, that is YouTube as well. That's in conjunction with them. But if you build your community based on your email list, that's something you own. Yeah. And so that was one thing that it was like, okay, build your email list. That way you're not depending on a bigger platform for your email list. You can just email your, your, you know, individuals when you have something going on and just keep them engaged that way. So that was just one thing that I, that was a major takeaway too, just to engage your guest and make sure you build that community and continue with having offerings, having a class that you can teach right now I'm working on a forgiveness class. Hmm. My book, Butterfly Blue, The Pain of Infertility and the Power of Forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I am working on teaching a forgiveness class because that works perfect with my background in, as a psychology professor. So they were just talking about some things whereas you can continue the process, you can monetize on some things like teaching a class and different things like that. Good stuff all around. I, I really like this. And I like the fact that they have different types of classes that you can go to. Uh, and then do they have like some like main events, like with a main speaker as well, that where everybody gets together? Is that kind of how that worked too? Yeah, Dr. Drew Come on. was one of, the, <laughs> one of the main speakers. Nice, Dr. Drew. Yeah, and he talked about, they showed a picture of him when he was right out. Of, he was still in... Um, he was in his residency and they told him, they were like, oh, we need you to come and on a radio show at midnight. So he would go on in the radio on, at midnight, then he would get up in the morning and do his residency. So they just walked us through his whole process. And one thing, he was on TV a lot, but he also continued to work. He was building his his practice, you know, his medical practice. And he did a lot in the space of addiction. So it was really good to hear from someone who basically the infancy of podcasting, he was a part of. Yeah. And so it was just really good to hear his story and understand, you know, where he came from and some of the bumps and bruises he, you know, went through. Cause he was like Adam Carolla. He met him the day of, <laughs> and they were like, they just had chemistry. And so they were like, well, how long have y'all known each other? They were like, we just met in the, <laughs> we just met in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are doing it. It's kind of like it, yeah. it's a validation of podcasting when somebody with a, a big name, familiar name gets up there and starts talking about podcasting and why it's important and why we as podcasters are important. It's nice to hear somebody who has a platform kind of come around and say, yeah, podcasting is a real thing. And, you know, everyone should pay attention. Absolutely. And he was, I, I'm not a person that takes a lot of pictures and kind of like, I'm not a groupie. So, but I saw pictures with him. He hung out and he, you know, took pictures with individuals and different things like that. There was another guy, he, and this is, I ran around with my book the whole time. Mm -hmm. I always had my book, Good idea. but there was another guy, he had like a, 
book signing. His book launch was at Podfest. And so he gave out a lot of books. He, you know, had like a social. And so it's like a big deal where individuals want to come in. And it's so crazy because I had never heard of it, but it's like a real community. And it's, you know, everybody's looking forward to doing next year. They're looking for speakers and different things like that. And so it's exciting. The other thing I hear about, too, is that there's sometimes there'll be vendors there that are from podcast hosting sites or microphone companies or anything to do with podcasting will show up and set up a table and you get to meet the people that are behind the scenes that make all this stuff work for us. Do you get a chance to talk to any of the vendors at all? I absolutely did. I actually won. They had a, a passport competition. <laughs> <laughs> of course you won. Know, of course you won. I'm doing all the things. And so <laughs> they had a, a, what it was is on the app, it's a Hoover app. Okay. And when you ran around to all the vendors, it was like 45 different vendors and they would scan your passport. It's like a QR code and they would automatically have your information. Yeah. And so it was like, win a hundred dollar gift card once you do all the passports. And so I, they put me in the, in the drawing and I won the hundred dollar gift card and so, and then they had another, the Hoopa app, there was another leaderboard where you could, it was one through 10, the top 10 people as far as PodFest. And I became number two. I met the guy, I podcast with the guy that was number one. And so I was like, I see what you're doing. <laughs> he was, I said, you're not even trying to hide how you're winning. He's like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> It was a friendly competition. We did a podcast together, but we I won Beats headsets for that one. Whoa. Well, that's not, but yeah. that's good. Yeah, that was fun. So uh, Buzzsprout was there. Yep. The head of Buzzsprout. I was taking pictures with him. We were, I was bugging him. I was ragging him and didn't even know who he was. And <laughs> he was like, I'm so tired. I was like, shut up and come take a picture. We was just having an amazing time. And then I read his name tag and I was like, the president of Buzzsprout. <laughs> that's good i'm like oh i would have a really good picture with him because he was just a fun guy we had just so much fun so yeah it's good there were quite a few vendors that were there that fincom was there my husband is really into the fincom space yeah. so he met VP of fincom which he had met him before when we were in new orleans last month uh, i'm sorry not last month uh last year we were in new orleans i think it was october of last year we went to FinCom. And so he was like, hey, you know, the VP of FinCom was there. And I think the president was on the way. I think they were caught up in 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 the airport traffic. And yeah. so good. It's great. Um it's it's amazing when when you get to one of these conferences and and you kind of mix with all these great podcasters. And like I said, you everyone and everyone there knows what a podcast is. <laughs> when you go in your regular day to day, some people are like, I don't even know what a podcast is, Adina. I have no idea what you're talking about. And then you feel like you're like, oh, I thought everyone knew what this was about. But going to a conference is great for that. Being this was your first one, and you said you're going to go back in the future, what would you what would you do again in a heartbeat next time you go? And maybe what's one thing you would do differently now that you've been there and kind of saw how all this works? Is there anything you would do differently as an attendee in your next time that you go? I think, oh my gosh, oh, I, I just try to do all the things. I think next time I probably will go a couple of days earlier. Because, uh -huh. I mean, they started, I think, Wednesday. I didn't get there till Thursday afternoon. So I'd probably go a little earlier. Um, I probably would also, because it's like sitting in the classes was very helpful because you can also get the recordings for later. But I think maybe I would maybe sit longer in the classes because it was almost like, I think the first day, that Friday, I did like seven different podcasts. So, <laughs> so it was like I was going around and just doing all the things. So I think that maybe I'll sit in the class longer, but I probably would, that would probably drive me crazy. I'd have to be out. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So for the benefit of those who haven't been to PodFest ever, like me, um, that would love to go, or a new podcaster listening to our conversation today. Let's get some words of encouragement from you as a podcaster. You're, you're new in the space, but you're doing so great, and it sounds like you're having so much fun being a podcaster. 
let's encourage the podcaster that's listening, maybe a future podcaster. Let's welcome them into podcasting and get your insight to kind of say, you can do this, A, you can do this, B, you'll have a community that will surround and love you. But your thoughts for a new podcaster, referring back to podcasts and everything you've learned, what would you say to a new podcaster listening right now? You said, just do it, just jump in, but let's expand that a little bit more. What can we do to encourage somebody to start their podcast? Let me tell you, I say, like you said, just do it, first of all, but do something you love. Do something you absolutely love and bring your own niche in, you know, your own niche, your own niche, your own thing that you're doing. Like I haven't talked to any podcasters that bring in research because they were a psychology professor. What is that one thing that you have that, you know, other people want to get a part of? They it's like it sets you apart because everybody's talking about what Dr. Dreyer is doing or you know, Drake or, you know, everybody's talking about pop culture, but spin it around, make it where you can support other people and help other people. For me, part of bringing in the research is teaching young women red flags and dating, encouragement, you know, teaching them self-care. So what can you do that you're not going to get tired of doing that is going to be like second nature and you're going to want to keep doing it? So Get in there and find out what your passion is as far as podcasting and bring your best self to it. Good. Bring your best self. Know who you are. If you're not the one that wants to sit in the classroom, know that. Know that you want to flutter around <laughs> in the hallway and meet with people and learn new things. Yeah. So get out there and don't be afraid. Just go out there and conquer it. You can do it. Good. And research is really important. I've talked to podcasters, Adina, and then they tell me that they have all the equipment. They turn on the mic and go, I don't even know what to talk about. They're like, well, I'll just make it up. And then they just kind of ramble through a podcast episode. There's no clear target. They have no real topic to talk about. They've not done any research at all. They just turn on the mic and talk. And after a while, they start running out of content because they haven't put any time and effort into researching their topics before they come to the microphone. So right. with your background and what you've done in the past, um, research is really important for you and how you approach life. Give us some more examples of why research is important as a podcaster. Why do we have to spend time researching our topic? You have to spend time not only researching your topic, but researching your, your target audience because you have to be able to speak to that person you want, like for me, my target audience is younger women, even though most women my age, I'm in my fifties, most women in my age are listening to my podcast, but you have to know your target audience. You have to know you're trying to get, you have to have an intention and a goal. I want younger people to listen so they can look at a more seasoned woman and say, heck, if you can do it, I can do it. That is my target audience to say, hey, you know, in this thing called life, do your best, get out there and conquer it, you know, do absolute everything you can to live it to the fullest, whether it's, you know, whether it's travel, I love to travel, whether it is knowing that you just want to meet people, knowing if you don't like to meet people, you might be okay, doing your podcast by yourself. I had to learn because that was initially what I was going to do. I was going to just do a podcast by myself. And I'm so thankful that my friend of over 45 years said, I want to go with you because we're able to bounce ideas yeah. off of each other. I love it when I meet podcasters like you because I'm like, I'm coming back because I love <laughs> the conversation. Yeah. I love the bounce ideas off of each other. I want to know what you know. I want to learn from you. So I think it's so important to do the research and find out who was in that space and who can help us. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are some people out there that are killing the game in podcasting. So go out there and talk to them. Yeah. I had one guy in PodFest walk up to me and he goes, your next podcast is how to retire your wife because my husband retired me last summer. And so I'm just getting ideas like that. And I'm like, heck, that's an amazing idea. So you have people that can pour into you, even on Facebook, get in a podcast group on Facebook. All you got to do is type in podcasting on Facebook and you'll see tons of groups that are there just to support you. Yeah, that's great. So it can be more than just a one-time event once a year. 
connecting with other podcasters can be all the time through your podcast, through like what I think I do is I host uh, weekly meetups for my on meetup.com. And I invite podcasters from around the world to come in and just hang out with other podcasters and learn from a group. If you get all your information from one person, you're only going to see the world one way. So having yeah. different people come in, and that's why I love having you on the show, is people don't just hear Dave's opinion of things. I only know what I know, and I don't know what I don't know. So to only hear my opinion can be a little bit empty at times. And having someone like you come on, we can learn together about the power of research for your podcast, for example. I've never talked about that on my show, but I know it's important. But now hearing it through you, it reinforces the fact that we really need to invest some time in our show to give a good quality podcast for the listener. That's the whole thing that I try to encourage everyone. Think about your listener. You can have a conversation with your best friend, but how does it serve the listener? Do you want them just to sit there and listen to you talk about the time you rode your bike for the first time? That's great, but what does it mean to me as a listener to hear that story? What am I going to get out of that? What can I yeah. apply to my life today from that conversation? And if it's just me listening to you, eventually I might stop listening because I don't feel like I'm included in what you're talking about. So bring that audience member in as you're talking about that great story and apply it to them. It's really, really, I think, something very important for all of us. Now, you said you have a list of questions that you're working through right now. And I'm nervous asking this question right now because you're going to throw it at me. But uh, you have like over 100 questions uh, it basically kind of around relationships and uh, all of that that uh, you said you wanted to bring up in our conversation. So I'm throwing the podcast over to you now, Adina. I'm I'm your guest. Let's go. Let's see what we got. Let's do this. You see the smile? This see? is my niche. This is what I love. See? Okay. So this is from cosmopolitan.com and it's 102 relationship questions to ask your partner. Oh boy. So we're podcast partners now. We are. I got some questions for you. Oh boy. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So this one is an easy one and I didn't give you this one ahead of time, but what is your favorite part of the day and why? Ooh. Um, I would say my favorite part of the day is the evening. My wife comes home from work. I shut off all my podcasting stuff and the two of us just sit together. We eat dinner together, watch TV, just be together in the same room. Even if we don't even say anything, we just, there's this feeling of, Ah, we're together. I love that feeling. And you better tell her that because with Valentine's Day being tomorrow, <laughs> right? you got to let her know. Yeah, right. <laughs> All righty. So the next question I have, what do you prioritize outside of work? Which you pretty much said your family, but what else do you prioritize outside of work? Uh, myself. I think that's creating good. time for myself and not feeling guilty for doing so and saying, you know, yeah. I need this time or I need this recharge. I need to to read that book or listen to that song or something that feeds me because yeah. in podcasting, for example, we give out a lot. We give a lot of content. We give a lot of time and we're giving, giving, giving. But you also need to refill your cup. Because again, that will go back to the research and what you can draw from. You have to have a full tank to even draw from. So fill your tanks. Yeah. And that's important because that's part of your self-care. Yeah. And self-care is not selfish. Like you said, we give out so much that it's so important that we do those things. Monday is my day to sleep. Luckily, today's Tuesday. <laughs> but Monday is my day to sleep Good. because that's part of my self-care. I want to rest. I want to sleep. I want to be able to put it out there and I need the energy. So I answered my own question on that one. Good. <laughs> here's the, here's one more question. And if you got room for one more after that, I can give you another one. It's 102, right? Let's okay. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Here we go. When you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, I have, this is interesting. I have a business card um, signed by one of the astronauts that went to the moon. I have his signature on a little bit. His personal business card, his phone number, 
<laughs> everything. It's and it says NASA, NASA on it. Everything. So uh, that was kind of shape that shaped me as a child to to go outside at night and go. That's a destination. Like people have been there before. It looks so far away, and that if somebody can do that. And then sign a little business card and give it to a little kid like me, then anything is possible. So I thought I could be an astronaut. I haven't done it. I'm probably afraid of heights. <laughs> so I'm probably not going to happen. But the fact that somebody, that I had the interaction with somebody that did something special like that, told me that I could do anything. Yeah. So you shoot by the stars. Yeah. There you go. Right. Amazing. That was a good question. I like that. See this, and this is why I like the research because it gives us an opportunity to get into who you are and how you became who you are. Yeah. And, and, you know, and so it helps us to know who you are just a bit. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I get nervous when you laugh before you ask the question. That makes me nervous, by the way. <laughs> This is amazing. I like this question. If you don't like this question, say that's a great question and we can move to another one. All right. What What's the worst date you've ever been on and why? <laughs> um, <laughs> now, if I if I do this in the context of pointing the attention at my wife, she's going to be mad at me because she's going to think that it was her fault. Um, worst date. Um, <laughs> gosh. There's, oh man. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Um, I could give you one while you're thinking. Yeah, give me another one while, you, while I'm thinking. Yeah. No, that's well, a, a not so great date for me is when, because my kids are at the age where they can just stay home by themselves. So my husband had this great date plan for us last week. We were going to see the Queens of String violin players and an oboe player, and they, they have, they mix. Oh, how to say it? They mix pop music with blues with, I mean, they just mix all this music together and you could tell they're just really into it and they're, ah, you know, doing the string. And, and my mom, she's the only person that pops by my house because I live like in a very rural area and it takes an hour to get to me. Cause I'm like, I'm in the country pretty much. I'm in the sticks. And <laughs> We're on the date. Time we sat down at the restaurant, we see the ring camera and my nephew was outside. And if my nephew was there, my mom is there. And so my kids opened the door, ran out the door to go see my mom. And I'm like, okay, this just ruined this date because now I got to get home because my kids are out of the house <laughs> and <laughs> my mom is at my house. And so I'm like, oh, this just ruined my date. We were ready to have so much fun. Right. So we cut our date short. So that was not the worst date in the world, but that's a reason why it was like the date was really cut short. Good. Well, there you go. I like that. Um, so for me, I would say that shockingly, I can I can actually say this. I don't think I've had a really bad date with my wife. Um because we had so much fun together. I think the only thing, I think the last date we had, we went to a restaurant and we sat down. We we're so excited to eat and everything. Got the menu, looked at the menu prices. And we haven't been to this restaurant for a while. And we're like, what happened? Like all of the prices doubled and tripled. It was like $40 for a Caesar salad. I'm like, $40? That's my groceries for the week. Yes. So, you know, I'm like, and that's a salad? That's what you buy before you get your dinner? I'm like... We looked at each other and we're like, should we go? And I'm like, no, this is a date. We're going to stay. But I'm like, I just couldn't believe the prices. I'm like, what happened? Have I jumped into the future? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> so that's probably the closest we got to be like, do we get out of here or what are we doing? Yeah. We're going to stay and order this ice water. <laughs> ice water. Yeah. With extra ice. Yeah. <laughs> to go. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Um, here, here's one more. What are some of your dreams? Hmm. As I related it to podcasts, one of my, I would, my dreams would be that I would meet someone who doesn't think they can do this. And I work with them to the point where they feel confident and they release their podcast. They see engagement and they know they're on the right path. Where somebody wow. said, I can't do this, Adina. There's no way I can do this. 
I don't know technology. I'm afraid that people won't like my voice. I don't think I can do what you're saying I can do and then walk them through to the point where they see their, they can say to Alexa, play my podcast and the smile on their face to know that they've gone from a place of I can't to I have. And that's kind of, that would be the, my biggest dream. If even if I can do that with one person, that would be enough for me, really. And that's kind of why I'm doing my show and having people like you come on is I want people to hear you and go, oh, Adina has an amazing podcast. And I'm like, so there's something special about Adina. So if she can do it, then I'm going to take inspiration from her, just like you took inspiration from the people at PodFest. People can be inspired by you just by showing up recording, releasing your episodes, learning, getting better, which you talked about, getting better as you release your podcast, that if you can do it, I can do it because you're a strong, powerful woman. And I look to you as an inspiration for me that I have a voice and I can do what Adina, what Adina does. So yeah, so that's, that's my goal. That's my dream. Yay. So we learned a lot about you through those questions. I know you were afraid, but look, you got an opportunity to share with your wife some stuff. How long have you been married? 30 years. Oh, that's amazing. 30 years. Yeah. She's put up with me that long. She's probably invested 30 years of training in me. So I'm worth keeping by this point. (laughs) (laughs) I celebrate 24 years next month. Congratulations in advance. Way to go. Good stuff. Yeah, so with 30 years, you got to do something special. This I know, is, right? Yeah, they go, you got to do something. I'll take her you to PodFest. That. That's what I'll do. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, yeah. She's like, yeah. I don't know if I want to go to PodFest. I'm like, you'll love it. You'll meet great people like Adina. So you got to go. Yeah, right? got to go. got to go. So yeah, so that was great. That was the research that I have. And that's 102 questions to ask your partner. And that's from Cosmo.com. Amazing. So maybe that's something you can continue with. Okay, so Adina, you got to promise me something. We've kind of talked about it a little bit. You got to come back in the future, talk podcasting, give us updates on your show, all of that great stuff. If you would please commit to coming back sometime in the future to have another conversation yeah, no. with me. I'm going to pop onto your calendar because I felt like I talked all about PodFest this fine. time. That's fine. We want to hear from you. That's great. So I'm going to pop back onto your calendar. I'm glad you gave me an opportunity. So yeah, I want to do this again. This is amazing. And I think it's so great that your dream is to continue your podcast. And I think that's part of it and to help other podcasters. And that's part of it. That's what you have to find, your niche and yeah. find what really drives you what makes you continue because so often podcasters stop and they don't find their passion so they don't continue so i think that's so important that we know our why okay so as we go adina please promote your podcast again but also for a new listener to your show they've never heard your podcast before um and when you go listen everyone make sure you rate review and follow do all that support adina um where do they go for the first episode where would you tell them to start listening to your show for a very brand new listener. The first episode, today's episode, the most recent one, tell us. But again, tell us about your podcast as we close off. About my podcast, uh, again, it's my friend and I. We've been friends for over 45 years. So I would say listen to the first episode so you can know who we are. You can hear our voice and you can tell the difference uh, because I think her voice is a little bit deeper and mine is like... (laughs) all over the place. So I'm pretty much the moderator of the podcast. And so I would encourage you to go to the first episode. There are some real serious episodes. Like I said, I bring in my research. But one of the things I did with my good friend, because of my book, Butterfly Blue, The Pain of Infertility and Power of Forgiveness, there was an issue that happened where I was triggered uh, by someone that I had forgiven them. It's so crazy. I was watching a podcast And I was triggered by someone's story. So I would encourage you to hear that podcast where my friend basically walked me through, processed the forgiveness that I had for that person and why I forgave them and why I was triggered by it. Hmm. So I get pretty personal in my podcast and I think it can help other people to understand, hey, I I wrote the book on forgiveness and I still have to walk myself through or, or get through some forgiveness parts because sometimes you will be triggered 
Okay. So that's part of it. That's one that I would encourage individuals to listen to and listen to the Beyonce experience when I went to the Renaissance movie. I mean, it's just fun stuff. So yeah, I would encourage individuals to just pop in and listen. Anywhere you listen, you'll get some research and you'll, I think you'll find something for you. That's good. And that's what we do. We try to encourage younger women or women to take care of themselves and be able to pour into someone else. Awesome. I love it. All the links, everyone, for Adina's show in the in the show notes, as always, of course. And we'd love for you to go right from here. You're still at the gym. You still got 10, 20 more minutes on the bike. I want you to head over to Adina's podcast right now and hit follow, like, hit play. Go listen to those episodes from PodFest as well. I've been listening to them. They're great. So head over there, take a listen, and support another amazing podcaster here on the How to Podcast series. Again, Adina, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. All right. Hey, thank you for sticking all the way through to the very end. It's bittersweet that the episode is over and that we're done for this episode, but you will come back and I will come back. And, you know, there's you and me and we're one big happy family here at the How to Podcast series, far beyond being just pod pals, which is fine, but I'd much rather do, do life together as family here. And to that end, a reminder as we talked earlier in other episodes as well that we do have a meetup group and you are invited I would love to have you come it's free we do them scattered throughout our calendar different days different times because we have people listening around the world like Cuba and Warsaw Poland hi Cuba it's amazing how we can reach the world with a podcast so through our meetup group what we do is we get together it's free for you cost me money but that's okay I'm okay with that we get together, we meet other podcasters, we talk podcasting, and it's a way to get from behind the microphone, sitting by ourselves, recording on our own, and doing community. Podcasters need community. You need to meet other podcasters. And just in a low-key, fun environment, talk podcasting. So my challenge to you in 2024 and beyond is to get into a meetup group find other podcasters, introduce yourself and make new friends. It's just like school all over again, grade nine. Let's meet each other and share the podcast journey. Go to howtopodcast.ca and click on all the information you'll find there around our meetups. And I'd love to have you there. Thanks for listening. Catch you on the next episode. Get out there and record your podcast. Take care.